On the 21st of August 2017, police were called to the residence of professional bodybuilder Dallas McCarver, who had been found unresponsive on his living room floor by his flatmate Joshua Lenato Wicks. 911, what's the address of your emergency? He's my friend, he passed out, he's dead, I don't know what's going on, I can't get him back. Okay, where's your friend? He's at home, he's passed out on the ground, I've been trying to resuscitate him, he won't come back. Dallas was last seen only an hour and a half earlier, cooking in the kitchen as Joshua was leaving to go to the gym. Despite efforts to resuscitate Mr. McCarver, he was unfortunately pronounced dead in the emergency room in the early hours of the following morning. He was just 26 years old. Many media outlets speculated that Dallas McCarver died due to choking on his food. Given both the nature of the scene and also as his airway was seemingly blocked whilst Joshua was attempting to deliver rescue breaths. Every time I do mouth to mouth, it's like there's something in his throat. I can't, I can't roll him over and get it out. He just gargles. He just gargles. It sounds like he's choking on something, or did he just pass out? Was he eating anything? But he's blue. He's gone. He was eating something. However, when a post-mortem examination was conducted, the report gave a very different conclusion. The autopsy revealed that Dallas McCarver's heart weighed over twice that of the average adult male. In addition, there was severe atherosclerosis of his coronary arteries. Given these findings, the coroner concluded that Dallas McCarver died of an acute cardiac event. In other words, Dallas died of either a heart attack or fatal arrhythmia. Starting with heart attacks, Dallas McCarver is by no means the only bodybuilder to fall victim to one so young. Sean Roden, age 43. George Peterson, age 37. The list goes on. We're seeing a lot of heart attacks and, and stuff with bodybuilders now in the 40s and 50s. Yeah, I wrote down a few names that I, I wanted to bring up because it, it feels like, well, especially... I got a list of 50 when I, I did a podcast last week with wow. this medical expert and there's 50 pros that I know about. That's just pros. That have died. What about amateurs? What about right. guys that never compete? So why are so many bodybuilders dying from a condition usually seen in patients twice their age? As I'm sure many of you guessed, the reason is due to the use of anabolic steroids. Dallas's autopsy report revealed he was on an absurdly high dose of testosterone, as well as taking Trembolone. However, before explaining exactly how steroids increase your risk of a heart attack, it's first important to understand what a heart attack actually is. A heart attack is a condition in which a section of the heart muscle dies due to a sudden blood blockage of blood flow. When the heart muscle stops receiving oxygenated blood, it starts to respire anaerobically, resulting in the production of lactic acid, causing crushing central chest pain. There are several mechanisms by which anabolic steroids increase your risk of having a heart attack. Firstly, anabolic steroids have been shown to cause high blood pressure by stimulating the kidneys to reabsorb more water into the blood. High blood pressure damages the inner lining of blood vessels, thereby allowing fats to lodge, accumulate and harden in the blood vessel wall. This process is called atherosclerosis, which is Greek for hardened gruel. Heart attacks are caused when the lining covering these plaques rips off, exposing the fatty core, which stimulates the blood to clot. This blood clot blocks blood flow, resulting in heart muscle ischemia and death. Anabolic steroids also accelerate atherosclerosis by deranging blood cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is a type of fat with many important functions, including stabilizing cell membranes and as a precursor for producing steroid hormones, bile, and vitamin D. Cholesterol is transported in large molecules called lipoproteins. There are many different types of lipoproteins protein, which range in size and density. Anabolic steroids have been shown to increase the amount of large, low-density lipoproteins, or LDL cholesterol, which bounce around inside our blood vessels and damage the inner lining, leading to atherosclerosis. At the same time, steroids have been shown to decrease the amount of small, high-density lipoproteins, or HDL cholesterol, which essentially act like hoovers, absorbing cholesterol in the blood and transporting it back to the liver. Overall, steroids have a double whammy effect. They both increase the amount of bad cholesterol and decrease the amount of good cholesterol. These are exactly the findings found on Dallas McCarver's autopsy report. The third reason why anabolic steroids increase your risk of a heart attack is due to their effects on blood viscosity. Steroids have been shown to increase the number of red blood cells in the blood. This makes the blood thicker and therefore more prone to clotting. However, steroids effects on our vasculature are almost as concerning as their effects on our heart. Steroids directly stimulate heart muscle growth like they do all muscles. An abnormally large heart is medically referred to as cardiomegaly. The problem with cardio megaly is the greater the size of the heart, the greater its oxygen demand. Therefore, when the oxygen supply is disrupted, the heart is more likely to become ischemic and die. However, steroids also stimulate heart muscle growth indirectly. The increased blood pressure associated with steroid use causes the heart to strain as it is forced to pump blood against increased vascular resistance. This further stimulates heart muscle growth, resulting in left ventricular hypertrophy. As the size of the heart muscle increases, the space within the heart chamber decreases, consequently decreasing the volume of 
blood the heart can pump per beat. This causes blood to back up upstream of the heart, which forces fluid into the lungs, resulting in pulmonary edema. Fluid in the lungs impairs gas exchange, resulting in shortness of breath, feeling faint or lightheaded, and a chronic cough in an attempt to clear the airways. Sound familiar? For those who are unaware, five months prior to his death, Dallas McCarver collapsed on stage at the 2017 Arnold Classic. In the emergency room, he complained of a chronic cough and difficulty breathing. Although Dallas attributed these symptoms to a chest infection, when an electrocardiogram was conducted, it found he had left ventricular hypertrophy. Dallas was subsequently booked in for a follow-up appointment with a cardiologist. However, he never attended. The other potential cause of Dallas McCarver's death is an arrhythmia, which translates to abnormal heart rhythm. The heart must beat in an ordered and synchronized way in order to effectively push blood from the atria to the ventricles and from the ventricles to the rest of the body. Thickening of the heart muscle due to left ventricular hypertrophy and cardiomegaly can disrupt the normal electrical conduction system, resulting in fatal arrhythmias. During an arrhythmia, as blood is not being effectively pumped out of the heart, the brain does not receive sufficient oxygen, resulting in loss of consciousness, anoxic brain injury, and death. Dallas McCarver is a sobering story of what happens when anabolic steroid abuse is paired with no professional oversight. Yes, he had a family history of heart disease, which is undoubtedly a contributing factor to the early onset of this cardiac event. However, this should not be used to disregard the role of anabolic steroids in Dallas's passing. Overall, this case is a stark warning for those who choose to use anabolic steroids to get regular blood tests, ECGs, and monitor their blood pressure under the supervision of a healthcare professional, so these risk factors can be detected and managed early before it's too late.